Welcome to the second day of our uh, workshop. Uh, my name is uh, Sagar Gahtani, a member and uh, an organizer of IEEE KFUPM Student Branch. I would like to thank you all attendees and uh, special thanks to Dr. Matez and Ms. Marwa from the Signal Processing Society for their cooperation. Finally, I would thank uh, your doctor, uh, the presenter, uh, Dr. Matez from the Islamic University of Gaza. Uh, yesterday, he introduced you to Python programming, and today he will continue to discuss Python collection as a plant. Now I'm giving him uh, the mic. Uh, you can start now, Dr. Matiz. Yes, thank you so much, Ali, and good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for joining uh, the workshop for the second day. And uh, Yes, let me share my screen. Um, I can't share my screen. Uh, Ali, would you please allow me to share my screen? Uh, yes, one second. Uh, can you share your screen now? Yes. Good. Okay. So, in fact, in, it's like the day one, uh, we talked about variables, naming convention, condi conditional statements, error, and exception handling function, naming convention again, and the best practices to write functions. And uh, I would like to share some really useful books for you. Uh, so these are the most um, uh, recommended book. Uh, books uh, like from my side. The first one is Python for Everybody. In fact, this book is designed or it's written by the author to for for uh, for, for, for people from any domain. It's not necessarily that they have some engineering or IT background. They can from art, they can from uh, uh, science or any other domain, they can learn it. Uh, they can learn Python so easy. And the most uh, important is this book is it's licensed under uh, Creative Commons, so it's uh, free and you can download it uh, in many formats like PDF and uh, EPUB, which can you, it's like you, you can read it on your uh, mobile device. And the second book is Think Python. So in, in fact, this is uh, it's like it's, it's targeted to computer scientists. So if you want really to understand um, um, uh, the, the logical thinking process uh, in Python, uh, the, that is the good book for you. The third book is uh, something really funny because it's, um, it's like, okay, I have now Python, what can I do with Python? So this book is all about it. It's, uh, it's like automate pouring stuff with Python. So you have so many things that is, uh, yeah, it's like so, so many stuff in your life that can be uh, boring. So you can automate it and write a Python script to automate the process. Uh, so you will find the link for these books and you have it here. It's like Python, everybody think in Python, automating boring stuff with Python. And you can have the link for these uh, books also in this article. Uh, I would like also to share with you this platform because we agreed last, uh, it's like yesterday, we agreed that uh, to be able to speak Python fluently, you should speak Python every day. You should practice Python every day, every day. And to do that and have feedback that you, okay, your code is correct, your code is not correct, 
I would recommend you to use this platform. You just search for hacker rank. The word hacker, by the way, is uh, it means uh, a programmer because in in seventies in the in the last century, hacker is considered as a programmer. Okay, and uh, okay, so hacker rank it's the rank of you as a programmer. Okay, so you can sign up, as you see here, you can sign up as uh, a developer, and companies are also there. So. so uh, like if you do a really good profile here in this platform, companies may come to you and it's like they provide you uh, an offer to work with them. Uh, for me, I have a profile for you. You can sign up as a developer here. So I will log in with my profile. Okay, you can choose here this Python. So you have domain and Python, okay? So I can sh share this link in the chat. So, yes. So here you can, uh, it's like filter the problems here, some a set of Python problems. So just just a moment. I have some uh, noise in the background. Just just one minute, please. I will mute and I'll come back. Okay, so I was saying that, okay, you can filter your problems, the, the Python problems here as solved. So that's the problem that I solved. So you can start, it's like easy. Okay, I want the easy. It's like you can filter on the status, solved, not solved. And based on the skills, it's like, okay, basic or intermediate or advanced. And you can, filter on the difficulty i need i want to fill, i want to see only easy problems or medium or hard or in the sub domains it means in the topic okay i want to for instance i want to uh, like uh, to have some uh, problems on python functional or maybe python string or basic data types or introduction so i can filter uh, these problems and once you like solve the problem you get some score okay and um, in fact that it's like what is really useful here that you can have a feedback about your code for instance let me like solve this exercise because because it's it's important that it's uh, in this workshop it's not not only you listen all the time. I want you to participate. And for tomorrow, I want to see some of you, all of you share their hacker rank profile. I want to see it's like their progress in Python and uh, how they practice, okay? So it's like I expect from you tomorrow to share your profile and you like started to solve some problem. Okay, let, let me solve this. For you, for instance, here is the task. We have an integer n, and we want to perform the following conditional action. We covered the conditional statements last, uh, uh, like the, the yesterday. Okay, if n is odd, we print weird. If it is even and it's inclusive in the range between two and five, we print not weird. And if it is n 
uh, even and inclusive between six and 20, we print weird. And even and greater than 20, we print weird. We, so we have so many cases here. And we have a constraint that, okay, n is, should be between one and 100. And here is a sample input. Sample input is three. It's print weird. Why? Because uh, it's odd. So it's like directly we print it's weird. Okay. And, and if we have another sample input, it's like 24. 24 is even. Okay, 24 is even, but it's greater than 20, so it's not weird. So the sample output is not weird. So here I choose that, okay, I want Python 3, okay? And like I complete the code here. So it's like I take this number and I parse it. It's like I take the input from keyboard using uh, the function input. This function strip is like if I add space or something like this, it would strip any white space and I cast it or convert it to integer type. So now I start to write my uh, statements. So I write if and like, okay, it's like how, how, how can I check the number is odd or even? Can anyone from the audience can tell me how can I check if the number is odd or even? Can you write that in the chat, please? Yes, we can use the reminder or the mod function. Or we can divide it by two. That's correct. Okay, so I can just write like if m mod two equal equal zero, that my, that means it's even or odd. Even, right? Yes, exactly. So that's even. Okay, so like I will do the opposite because we have here the first case as odd, then the rest is even. So I would write not equal to and print what is the output, the output is weird. Okay, so as a string is weird. Okay, so else, else it's, okay, we agreed that this is odd. And this is, it's like even as a comment here. Okay, we will check the range. So to check the range, we, I can type F and what is the range again? It's between two and five. So I can write it like this, two is then m and five. So you can read it like this. You, I can do it with and, of course, but for me, this is like, this is a shortcut and it's, it's more readable for me. So m is greater than two and m is less than, Five. You see, I start from the middle and write it from the middle to left and from middle to right. One more time. So n is greater than two and n is uh, less than five. So in this case, we print not weird. I have a mistake, by the way. We can use if and else, but uh, I just decided to do it like this. It's like there is an endless solution for that. 
and I, I will show you like how your code is tested. That's the interesting part. It doesn't matter how you write your code. The most important is the like you do some test cases, and this is called test driven development or something like TDD. So TDD, it means that I have some test cases. I it's like pass these test cases to your code. If it is successful, then your code is correct. And that's the feedback, okay? So, no, 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 it's, it's, uh, it doesn't matter that you need to check that it's, this is a constraint. It's like, this is an assumption for the range of the M. And uh, it's, you, I don't think that you need to, uh, to check that. Okay, let's check the other range. It's between two and 20, it's weird. So I just repeat the same process, L like six and five, uh, sorry, 20. And the result here is weird. By the way, I have a mistake here. This is like, it should be W capital because he said that, okay, weird. But I did that intentionally. It's like an intention to uh, to uh, to 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 see to 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 make you uh, to show you uh, that uh, the test driven development it's like it compares your output with the expected output if they are the same then the test case is passed if it is not then it's, uh, it's like you have a problem with your code and okay let's come back here and we have the it's like the last case. The last case we can do with else, just else, like this. Okay, as you see here, I do F else and nested F and the else part. So it's like, okay, if I if this is false, then for sure the, the number N, the variable N is greater than 20. So like that's why I will write it here for you as a comment. So n is greater than sorry, greater than 20. And in this case, I will print what was the case, not weird. Weird. Okay. I finished the code. I can it's important that you run the code first, then you submit. If you submit that, then this is the final solution. No, I need to check the code first. So I just run, click on the run button. Okay, I have this case, this uh, test case zero is failed. Why? Because it's a wrong answer. When the input is a three, I should expect something like weird W in capital, but my output was weird with w is small so that's why i have this problem i have another test case which is 24 and my output is not weird and the expected is not weird so they are exact, exactly the same that's why it's correct one more time test case zero is failed because it's like the expected output outcome or the expected output is weird W is capital, but here I have weird with W is small. That's why I wanted to show you. It's like, what is the problem here? So I just fix my code here. If you have a syntax error here, you will have it like below. It's like you will like see what kind of error that you have, like value error or the name error or any type of error. I run the code again. I have the both test cases passed. It's correct. Congratulations. Then, okay, I see that, okay, my code is good. I can submit it for more test cases. As you see here, I have seven use cases. All are successful. 
except for the last one. Okay. Uh, the last one expected is weird, but it seems that it's when it is 20. So, okay, not weird, weird, not weird. Uh, one more time, not weird, weird, not weird, and here, not weird, weird, not weird. Okay, I guess that it's, yes, let me read again. If n is inclusive in the range of 6 to 20, we print, okay. So that means that it should be something like this. And I submit the code again, and all the test cases were successful, and I gained Yes, I gained the score for this. Uh, should be something like uh, how many marks here? Uh, it should be written somewhere. Yes, it's 10 marks. So I get 10 marks for this. Okay, that's correct. Okay, so. I submitted the code, I can go to, to the next challenge. And as you see, there is a platform that tells you your code is correct and not correct. In this way, you can practice Python. And please do practice Python for tomorrow. Please share your profile. If you want uh, like to know how to share your profile, you see here, it's like you click on your profile here and you click on the profile and you can see that okay if it's like in problem solving I got three stars and Python I got four or five five stars and SQL so I can share my profile it's like for you no problem for me okay next time next hello can you hear me now I see some people say, okay, you can hear me. Okay, okay, okay. So I think that's, it's it's a problem on your side, Ravat. I think so. Okay, uh, I shared my profile with you today. It's like tomorrow I need to see your profile. Please do share your profile tomorrow. I need to see that you practiced some Python and share it with us tomorrow. Agreed? Perfect. Okay, so I have some questions. I will take just some questions quickly and we will go to complete the session. We have a question from anonymous attendees. Can we build and distribute graphical user interface with Python? Yes, you can do that. There is a library called uh, PYQT. Uh, there is there is a lot of libraries that you can uh, it's like uh, Python UI libraries. You have Thinkit, you have P PY, it's like you have PyQt5, and Python uh, 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 Tkinter. Okay. And you have BY side too. There, there's a lot. It's like the, the most common one is BY Q, Q2, Q, uh, QT5, sorry. And, um, and uh, yeah, um, in fact, it's in, in my opinion, a graphical user interfaces or desktop application is uh, it's like the age of desktop application is gone. Now we are in the age uh, of web applications and mobile applications. So if you want to do something really useful with Python, I strongly recommend you to learn Python uh, web framework like Flask or Django. Uh, okay, so that's why we say that uh, it's like when you when you like take the track of Python, it's like you have uh, 
two, two, two things to do, in, either to, uh, to develop web applications or to do data science or data analytics, okay? So uh, that's the answer for the question. Another one, it's like, can't we nest the other instead of using it in the else? Yes, you can do that, but yes, as I said that there is, so many way to do that. Uh, no, 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 it's not the performance. It's um, it's like, it's always in my teaching that uh, I make the code more readable or to, that's why I feel that it's better to write it that way. Okay. And uh, does this relate to syntax of Python? Of course not. Is there any known programs that are built via Python. We already mentioned that in the in it's like in the yesterday workshop. So please, uh, it's like the, the panelists they can share the video with you and you can see what kind of the knowing programs that were that were built by Python. In fact, there is a lot, and I think uh, the audio, the audience in the chat in, in the chat they can write you some application. So let's see that if they still remember. So please write for uh, for our friend who's asking what are the known programs that were that were built by Python. Please like that in the chat. Yes, correct. Netflix, Dropbox, exactly. Instagram, exactly. Okay, that's perfect. You have a problem with the test case seven. I guess it's the same of my pro it's like my problem. You should have it uh, in the condition a 20 uh, and less than or equal to 20. Okay. Okay, Mohammed. Read it exactly. Okay, so uh, that is the active learning. Exactly. That is the active learning. The active learning is that you're, you, you are not listening all the time, you are creating something. And when you created your profile to hack a rank, that is a good thing, okay? So now we will move uh, to the second part. We will write code to um, how, how we can, uh, the loops and iteration in Python, and we will see how like the Python string library and the collections and the files. Hopefully we can like manage to cover all these points uh, in today's session. So we will start quickly at the first one here. So I will open up a new notebook and I will just call it workshop day two. Okay, and we will start with, uh, as we said, um, like loops and iterations. I can move this up and yes, I connect here. Okay. Loops in Python. Loops in Python, you can use it in it's like using two keywords, like while and for. Okay. Let's start with while. Um, Okay, so the syntax is I can have some initial value like uh, zero and I want to do a loop for 10 times. So I, will, I can say while n is less than 10, I can print hello. So it's like the question here is like, please write 
אדם, כן, הלו, תן טיימס. אוקיי? So it is not reasonable that it's you do like this print hello okay and you just keep repeating this you are not a programmer if you if you are doing like this okay it's like what if I asked you to do this 100 times it's not logical to do like so so you need to repeat. Uh, you, you need to do an iteration. So you can do iteration using while. Do we have a problem in this? If I run the code, what will happen? So please write in the chat. No increment. What does it mean, no increment? What will happen? It will run. for forever, right? Infinite loop, exactly, exactly. So I, I wouldn't do this because it's like, it's an infinite loop. So we need to do an increment to make, to, to make this reach to 10. And finally it will stop at 10. So I'll do n plus equal one. In fact, this statement is like it's 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 equivalent to this n equal n plus one. You have it in other languages like n plus plus, but we don't have this in Python. Okay, so you can do plus equal one. That means it's n equal n plus one. Now, yes, I can say hello ten times. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, for sure you, no, it's, it's 10 times because it's from zero to nine, it means 10, okay? So these are 10, 10 times. You can start from one and write it's, and equal, sorry, less than or equal 10, then yes, it's, it, it will still 10. And um, let's do a count down, right? Count down. So the first thing that we will enter, like, okay, n equals integer input, and we tell the user, please enter account now. We can do the strip part here. I will let you why the strip is really useful. Okay. And I can say while and um, is greater than zero. Countdown, that means, okay, I would say 10, 9, 8, 7, and like so. That's why I do the opposite. N is greater, it's like while N greater than zero, okay, we can uh, print N, and we know we need to do the, the decrement N minus equal one. So we have the countdown. So the user will enter the countdown. Okay, and finally we print. Um, as you see here, we have here the scope. Again, the scope, they, these two statements, line four and five belongs to the white. So we run and the strip is like, no, please not. Please watch. So I will type for for example, five, and I do a space. Do you see the little space? If I don't like call this function strip, it will cause a problem, okay? Uh, but it's like, okay, uh, the strip function will remove this extra space and it will work very nice, okay? So we have five, four, three, two, one, done, like this. 
we can run it again with a different values, for instance, seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, done. Okay, so that's the two forms of while. It's like we do an increment and decrement, and you see every thing it has its own purpose. And now we can move to the second part for four. Okay, four, let's assume that we have a list. In Python, we have a list. We can have a list of numbers like L1 equals, List, it means an array. If you, it's like your background is uh, something like MATLAB or um, Java or C++. Um, array is it's like a list of numbers. In Python, we call it a list. So we have like one, four, zero, two, five. Yes. I have a question. Can you repeat the function strip? Yes, I can repeat that. And, uh, the function strip, what it do is that, let me do it here, okay. All that. Okay, I have a string like hello. You see, this is like the output of the string hello. But what if I add a space here? You see the space here, it exists. The strip, what it do is, it will remove the white space from right and lift, please note the output. You see here, it's like before calling the strip and I will call the strip here. You see, the white space is removed from the left side and you can also have it on the right side. On the right side, I will not do a space, I will do slash T. Slash T as in a control character, okay? So without, Without a strip, it's there. It add tab to your string. And to see the effect of this is like, I will just call it. You see the tab, all this is tab and you have here the extra space. Okay, here it again. So to remove the slash T from the left and the space from the right, all these are called white space and you can remove it from using the strip function. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions? Okay. So, Uh, removing space from uh, removing spaces, Walid, removing spaces between the letters is, uh, um, let's do that in the string because we have this, uh, yes, Python string. Let, let's, let's finish the loops. We have the strings. We will do all the string operations like cleaning the text and all these things, okay? Okay, perfect. Uh, yes, so here, like loop using operation value. Okay, using the iteration variable, I can write for, I can write an iteration variable this is a variable that I like you can choose then whatever name you want. Okay, in L1, 
print num. What does that mean? Like I ask Python to create an iteration variable. And it, this iteration variable, each time, it will take an element from L1. So it's like in the first iteration, N will equal one. The second iteration, N will equal four. Next iteration, it will be zero and so on. So this variable is an iteration variable. We call it an iteration variable. As you see, it's like one, four, uh, uh, zero, two, five. It's the elements of this list. Okay, so you can loop over it using this iteration value. And you can change the name as you want. You can choose X. Like, and again, it's not recommended to use names like this X. What is X? So I use always, it's like a meaningful uh, uh, name, like number. Okay, so that's the first way to do for loop. And the second way is to loop, loop using index. Okay, we have a question. No, it does not. Uh, it's like we have anonymous in D who have so many questions. Yes, uh, he, it's like the question is for num in L1, does it mean that for the size of L1? No, it's not like this. It means that for every element in the list L, it's like do the following like this. Like for every element, we will call it number in the list, print this element, okay? Okay, it's like the second way to do loops is to loop using index. In this case, we can do for i, i it's also an iteration variable, but in this, like this time, it means that's I in, we write here, range, len, L1. Okay, let me simplify this to you. So how many elements we have here? Please count with me. One, two, three, four, five elements, right? I will just replace this for the moment with five. Okay. So to understand this, let me just try to get this. So we have range five. What does it mean? It means I can do this as a list to show you what does it mean. It will create a sequence of numbers, five numbers, start from zero, one, two, three, four, okay? In fact, this is a built-in function and I can play with it. I can like provide so many parameters, like for instance, instead of starting from zero, I don't want to start from zero. I want to start from slide two, okay? And, um, And as you see here in the documentation, this is the start and the stop and the step. And the step here is like, okay, I will do it up to 10 and the step is three. What does that mean? It will start from two, okay, up to five. And every time it will add a three. So two plus three, five. Five plus three, eight. Eight plus three, it's 11. No, it's out of the range because we asked the function to do it until eight. So Ibrahim, you were correct. It's eight to five, that's perfect. Okay, let's come back here to the for loop. 
That means it's, it will generate a sequence of numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And with this number, I will use it as indices. I will use it as indices. So I would say print. If I print i, it will print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't want i. I don't want this iteration variable. I, I want to use it as index. Index of what? Index of this list, L1. OK, so I say I write L1 of, I open the brackets of L i. So you, you will see here the elements of this list is 1, 4, 0, 2, 5. 1, 4, 0, 2, 5. OK, so that's the second way to do a loop operation. OK, but what if the list size is different? It's, it's not recommended always to hard code it. So to get the list size or the number of the elements of the list, you can use the built-in function len, and you can write the name of the list. So it will be 5. So I can use this instead of 5. So it depends on the size of the list. So if the size uh, changed, then it's not a problem for me. OK, I think now this is understandable. OK, so you can loop over the list using the index or using the iteration variable. OK, and you can use this as you want. I mean, uh, I mean, it's it, it depends on, on like what you need. So for instance, if I like, okay, uh, it's like write, write a program to some a list. So it's like we can write, it's like we define the total equal to zero for number L1 total plus equal num. Okay. So it's a commutative sum and I just print the total. So the sum is 12. You can do the same with, with indices. <clears throat> but what if I asked you to like write a program to add two to each element of the list. So in this case, if I just repeat this code, we didn't need the total. <clears throat> and it's like we need to add two to each element. And we print the list L1 again. So I just print here B4, L1. And I will then name after. Before and after are the same. Because what I did here, I just added two to, to the iteration variable, not to the element of the list itself. So the scope of this variable is each iteration is it changed and it's like the new value, it's gone. It's not saved. So to fix this problem, you need to use the index. So I n range len L1 and uh, yes, L1 of fill I 
plus equal to. So that's before. It's like every time is it's like it's every element it has. It's like two, four, six, zero, two, two, four, five, seven. I guess this step would give you a tip when you use the iteration variable and when to use the index. Okay, I have two questions. And like, is there a function to print values on the same line instead of a new line? Uh, <clears throat> Iman, you can do this. Is like, it's like you can print. It's like all the list element print l1 like this or if you want you can print the list element like this uh, just like this yes so you just put a star here it will print it without brackets without comma and if you want, you can do this using in, in the for loop. So for i, like for num, and l1. You can print num. And there is a value here which 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 is called end so the end of the of the of this statement or or of this line it can be a space by default it it it's it was uh, a new line so that's why you see here it's like the print it's like every element in a new line so you can replace it with i want a space or any other thing that you want so as you see here it's the same result, okay? So that was the question from Iman. And we have another question. Why you are still using the range with Len? Um, I really don't get your question. Why you are still using range with Len? Uh, okay. Um, um, the reason for that is, okay, let me explain. Okay, you have len of L1. How many elements is five, okay? I can extend this function. Uh, I Sorry, I can extend this list. For instance, L1.append, it's like, okay, I'll just before I will print L1. You see, it is the element. I can append an element, I uh, would say nine. Okay. I want to show you L. So, and the len of L that's why it's better when you write a for loop for I in range len. It's better to use len L1 than using the hard-coded length. The hard-coded length, five, you don't know if that's like that the list size is changed or not. So every time you loop over the list, you get the list size automatically using this built-in function. I hope this answers your question. Okay. Yes. So, um, No, no, you cannot use uh, it's like you cannot use the uh, uh, you cannot use the um, you need you need to generate a sequence of numbers and to generate a sequence of numbers you need the function range as I said 
the function range it will create a sequence of number for you okay and this sequence of number as i said it's six numbers from zero to five zero one two three four and this is these are the indices that's why we need to use the range you cannot write something like for i n five five is not a list okay yes exactly that's correct Bucker. we need a list for any loop in python okay so to sum up you can loop using indices but you need to generate these indices how you can generate these indices using the 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 the, the built-in function range or you can loop using the iteration variable okay that's that's the the thing okay you want a certain element in the list you can call it like this it's like it's like list l1 of you 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 need the it's like the third element the index of the third element is two okay the two is the value is two it's like if we just print l1 again so that's the third element is two if you want it's like the the first element is zero you want the second element it's six uh sorry this is the third element the second element is one because we start the index from zero okay Okay, so uh, Ali, I think that uh, can we proceed to Python strings? It's what we can do it for tomorrow. Uh, I think it's better for tomorrow because we exceed the time. Yes, okay, perfect. So if you have any question, I can take them quickly and tomorrow we can continue. And again, I just want to say that again, tomorrow I expect from you to share your hacker rank profile. I want to see, to see it's like you are producing and creating Python uh, programs, please. Do you, do you have any questions? I guess there's there, there is there are no questions. Can you uh, libraries? I can do it for tomorrow. There's like I can explain libraries in tomorrow, inshallah. And uh, yes, Muhammad. Muhammad, what is what is your question? Muhammad, do you have a question? Okay, I think there is, yes. Okay, you are a beginner in Python. So what, what is the question? Even you are beginner with Python, you can like practice a little bit in hacker rank. It's it's good that you speak Python. It's like I want to see you speak Python tomorrow. Okay, Muhammad. And yes, thank you. It's like thank you everyone.
uh, you can take your time, Mohammed, to uh, solve the questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Matez. Yes, you are welcome. Very glad to have you here today. Yes. And uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, today, tomorrow, inshallah, we'll ha we will have the last session. In, uh, yes. Python. Yes, inshallah. Thank you so much. You're welcome.